Yes, uh, first of all, I uh, will call it the biggest forgery in history because we believe a biography, we believe that it's authentic, but it turned out it's not authentic at all. So Muhammad's biography, um, I call it the biggest forgery in Islamic history. The first big question, why we do not have a biography of Muhammad in the first hundred years? Is there a reason, an excuse? Look at Christians, for example. They were persecuted. They had, um, they, they, they suffered. They were killed. They were burned alive. They had so many problems. They didn't have power. They didn't have the means. But still, they were able to write not just one biography, four biographies from the first hundred years of Christianity. Why nothing similar happened to Islam? Uh, Islam, they had the power, they were, they were the rulers, they had the money, they had the writers, they had everything, but still they didn't produce a simple biography of Muhammad in the first hundred years. So that leaves us with a big question. Is there a reason uh, to doubt? Probably there are so many problems with the, 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 the figure of Muhammad. Did he exist as we were told later? Is he the same person or something happened on the way? I think they forged his biography. So many things about him are not historical at all. And that's why they never wrote the biography the first time. So who wrote the, the first biography of Muhammad? His name is Muhammad, the same name as Muhammad. He lived from 699 to 769. And his name is Ibn Ishaq, means his dad was Ishaq. Ibn means the son. So Muhammad, the son of Ishaq, the son of Yasar, Ibn Yasar. Just for you to know, Yasar was a Christian. And when Muslims invaded Iraq, what is called today Iraq, Khalid ibn al-Walid, he took this young boy, Yasar, he took him as a slave to Medina. And he sold him to the family of Muhammad. So he was a slave, belongs to the family of Muhammad, Yasar. He was a Christian. He was the sources, the only sources of, uh, of Islam. They tell us Ibn Sa'd, for example. He tells us that Yasar was studying in a church. He was studying theology in the gospel. So Yasar, the grandfather of Muhammad ibn Ishaq was Christian. He was very familiar with the Gospels. So I'm sure that ibn Ishaq uh, knows Syriac and knows Christianity because of his family's history. And that's why he was uh, able to write such uh, a biography. And why he wrote it, if you go to the Gospels, uh, anyway, what I was saying was I was talking to Karm because Karm said in my book, it said Muhammad died in 632. I was pointing out that uh, Muhammad on the slide here is not Muhammad the prophet. This is Muhammad Ibn Ishaq, right? The author yes. of yes. the author yes. of the Sirat Rasul Allah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're not talking about the prophet Muhammad right now. Muhammad Ibn Ishaq wrote the biography of the prophet Muhammad and uh, Rashid here has on the slide, he, he just breaks it down into Muhammad. So his, his first name is Muhammad. He's called Ibn Ishaq, which just means son of Ishaq. So that, that's, that's his, uh, that, that Ishaq is his father. And then his grandfather was a Christian slave. And so brother Rashid is pointing out that the, uh, that Ibn, uh, Ibn Ishaq, who wrote this biography, would have been familiar with Christianity because he comes from a Christian family. So I'm assuming, I, I, I do not know Rashid's presentation. I, I haven't seen it before, but uh, I'm assuming that that is going to be very important for what, what's coming up. Yes, it's very important because he knows the gospels. He knows Syriac. He's very familiar with Christian literature. And he knows the biography of Jesus Christ, which is in the gospels. Uh, Ibn Ishaq went to what is called now today Baghdad, went from Medina uh, to Iraq. I'm, I'm sorry, he went what 
uh, to what we call today Iraq. And he wrote the, the biography of Muhammad in Iraq, in his the town of his grandfather, Yassar. So he went there. And why he wrote the biography of Muhammad? If you, if you read the Gospels, you don't find anybody paying the writers to, to write uh, a biography. They, they were not paid to do it. They, they did it because they loved Jesus Christ. They loved their master. And they wanted to write down everything he said, everything he did, and tell everybody else about it. But uh, for, for, for Muslims, the, the reason why Ibn Ishaq wrote this, because the caliph, Abu Jafar al-Mansur ordered him to do it. He, he, he gave him an order and he paid him as well. So he was paid, ordered by the caliph to do it. And that's a huge difference with the, the, the Gospels uh, because they were written for different reasons. And that brings us to uh, the caliph, the caliph al-Mansur. He ruled from 754 to 755. Uh, 775. So we are assuming sometime between 754 and 769, this biography was written. The time when Muhammad ibn Ishaq died and the time when the caliph ruled. So there are some 15 years there. So um, to give it an estimate, um, Muhammad died 632, the prophet Muhammad, and the first biography probably written around 760. And that's a huge gap. We have almost, almost um, 130 years gap. Um, it, it's, it's, there are so many things that can happen during 130 years. And as I said at the beginning, why they never wrote a biography in the first 100 years. There is another problem. Do we have a copy of the biography of Ibn Ishaq? No, we don't. So what we have today, actually, it's not the biography of Ibn Ishaq. It's the biography of Ibn Hisham. That's another problem we add to Ibn Ishaq. So we have 130 years, but still we have zero biography. Who is Ibn Hisham? Ibn Hisham is a student to Ziyad al-Baka'i. Ziyad al-Baka'i is a student to Ibn Ishaq. See the gap now, it's from 769 to 802 to 833. So actually we have a biography that was written 833. That's 200 years from the death of Muhammad. Ibn Hisham, he heavily edited the biography he took from this guy Ziyad, which he edited from Ibn Isha. So we have a forged biography edited by a student and handed to another student who edited that edited biography. So the, the gap is big and the problems are getting bigger. So now it's 200 years from 632 to 833. What's the reputation of Ibn Ishaq, the original writer or the, the, the guy who we were told he wrote the biography? He was known as a forger among Muslim scholars. Do you know him? Do you know he forges stuff? He makes up stuff. Malik Ibn Anas, which is he's the founder of the Maliki school, said about Ibn Ishaq, Dajjal min al means he is one of the biggest liars. He is a quack of many quacks. That's what he said. This is a scholar. That's not me or, or David. That's Ibn Mal Malik Ibn Anas. Malik Ibn Anas, he is the, he's one of the biggest early scholars in Islam. He said, never trust Ibn Ishaq because he's one of the biggest liars. So Muslims are telling me today they got their biography from the biggest liar ever not trusted by al-Bukhari or by Ahmed. They didn't trust him. So that's why we don't find his hadiths in Sahih al-Bukhari 
or in Musnad Ahmed because they don't trust him. They don't rely on him. And but still we have his biography until today. And I want to add this. David, you debated so many Muslims, and I'm sure they bring that the Paraclete or Paracletus is Muhammad, right? Oh yeah, that's uh that's one of their their that's their favorite passage to go to in the New Testament. They have Deuteronomy 18:18 18, 18 is their favorite from the Old Testament, and this is the favorite from the New Testament. The first guy who forged this argument is Ibn Ishaq. He is the one who came up with this idea because he tried to forge everything in the Gospels and make it look like it is about Muhammad, not about Jesus. So he is the first one who made this argument. And since then, nothing changed. The dad repeated the same thing. Zachary Naik repeats the same thing even until today. They are not creative. They just repeat what Ibn Ishaq said for 1300 years. So next time when they bring it, tell them who was the first one to use this. One of the biggest liars in Islamic history, as Malik uh, uh, said about him. So now we go back to the Gospels and Muhammad's biography, according to Ibn Hisham, who took it from Ziyad, who took it from Ibn Ishaq, which was 200 years later, from the time when Muhammad died. The first thing that Ibn Ishaq started the, 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 the biography with is the genealogy. Does that ring a bell for you, David? He started by Ibn, mm -hmm. son of that, son of that, son of that, son of that, to go up. Yeah, sounds like a gospel. Exactly. So why, why would Ibn Ishaq start with the genealogy? Because he was copying from the Gospels. He was looking at a model. So if, if you were in the 7th century or the 8th century and you were going to write a biography, what is the best source to go to? What is the most available biography around you if you are, if you are in a Christian environment in, in what is called today Iraq? It was um, Christian, 100, almost 100% 100 Christian. Mm -hmm. So he looks at the Gospels and he knows Syriac. So he started imitating everything in the Gospels. So he started with the genealogy to prove that Muhammad is the son of Ishmael to bring him to Abraham, to, to find a legitimacy. So he forged, the first thing he forged is the genealogy of Muhammad. And let's look at some striking similarities. The biography of Muhammad starts with the genealogy. The Gospels, especially Luke and Matthew, they start with the genealogy. And there is a star of Muhammad. I'm going to show you the page later. There is a star. It's called the star of Muhammad. And I think everybody knows the star of Bethlehem, the star of Jesus. So that it doesn't take a brain to know that. The prophecies about Muhammad, the first thing that Ibn Ishaq started talking about are, are Christians and Jews talking about the coming one, the prophet. And that looks like the Gospels exactly because Matthew brings the prophecies first before he starts talking about the mission of Jesus Christ. So we have three elements, genealogy, the star, and the prophecies before the mission of Muhammad. And that's a clear, clear, um, if I don't, if I, I don't want to say he stole it, at, at least it's a borrowing. The genealogy, it's in page three. If you have the same, uh, uh, if the same version as David, uh, when you showed at the beginning, uh, it's in page three. And you will find Muhammad's star in page 70. It says, tonight has risen a star under which Ahmed is to be born. That's, that means a, a, a Jew who said that. I heard the Jew calling out at the top of his voice from the top of a fort in Yetrib, and he told his fellow Jews that there is tonight a star was risen or has risen. The prophecies, we can find them in different pages, but especially page 79, the story of Bahira. When he went to Damascus, uh, Muhammad went with his uncle to Damascus. 
for for a caravan with a caravan and and also Bahira saw his description in the Christian books that's what the biography says that this this monk this Christian monk found the signs of Muhammad in Christian books so always uh, Ibn Ishaq is trying to find something in Christian books to say it is about Muhammad means he was looking into the Gospels when did Muhammad go to Syria do you have an idea uh, David did you hear it from Muslims um no actually I have no idea oh uh, this say if you ask any Muslim mm -hmm. when did Muhammad go to Syria they will say age of 12 mm -hmm. that's not from the biography of Muhammad but it's in other books but uh, does that ring a bell at age of 12 yeah with uh with Jesus traveling at, at age 12 yeah, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. So everything, they are trying to make it look like Jesus, everything about Muhammad. So at age of 12, he went to Syria and he had this, this discussion with the monk, with a, a, a Christian monk. The same thing, Jesus, he had a discussion with the uh, Jewish scholars when he went with his mom and dad. And other similarities, at age of 40, page 104, he started his mission or ministry, Muhammad. Jesus at age of 30. So Ibn Ishaq was playing with numbers here. And, and Muhammad went to the cave, cave of Hera, page 106. Jesus went, went to the wilderness. Muhammad was fasting. Sorry, I forgot an S here. Fasting for 30 days, page 106. Jesus was fasting for 40 days. So he adds a 10 here, he removes a 10 there just to make it look a little bit different, but it is the same. And he met, Muhammad met a spiritual being. They say it's Gabriel, the angel at page 106. Jesus met a spiritual being, but it was the devil. And this spiritual being with Muhammad, he coded what is called scripture, the Quran. And with Jesus, he quoted scripture, the Bible. So he, you can see there is a pattern here. Don't you see it, David? Um, yeah, there, there, are, there are some definite similarities here. Yes. And at the start of his ministry, Muhammad, after the encounter with, with, uh, with, the, with the angel, he came back and he started choosing disciples like Ali and like others, Khadija. And he started talking to others. He made many followers after that. The same thing Jesus did after uh, the wilderness. And Muhammad started his secret ministry, page 115. The same thing. Jesus was not, he didn't have a public ministry at the beginning. And then Muhammad proclaimed his ministry. The same thing Jesus did later in his town. And then persecution started. The same thing with Jesus, persecution started. And then Hijra from Mecca. Then Jesus left Nazareth. And they attempted an assassination before he left. Muhammad, if you remember, they put Ali instead of him. And then he left with Abu Bakr. And then they, they tried to follow them, and then they made it to Medina, if, you, if you're familiar with that story. And the same thing with Jesus. They attempted an assassination on the mountain. They tried to, to push him from the mountain, and he just went through them. With, uh, it sounds like a miracle, and the same thing with Muhammad. It sounds like a miracle. He escaped. He, he went, actually, and they were looking, and they didn't see him. That's what... The biography of Muhammad said. And then he started his expeditions or raids, and Jesus started his ministry. There are some striking similarities here. And I think Muhammad ibn Ishaq was borrowing from the Gospels and was forging a biography. We don't know for sure if these things happened. Actually, I have many doubts after seeing this. He, he made up so much so many things according to uh muslim scholars he is a liar so i wouldn't be surprised if he makes most of this biography from just borrowing from the gospels 
And actually, he had a 12. If we go back to um, the disciples, actually, the first in, in Bayat al Aqaba, they call it al Aqaba. It's when, when the helpers, 12 of them, they came and they, 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 they made a covenant with Muhammad. And that's in page 198. There were 12 of them. The first 12 helpers from Medina, there were 12 of them. And I, I wonder where he took that number 12 from. It's obviously from the, the disciples. There were 12 of them. And you can see it here, page 204, too. Um, the names of the 12 leaders in the rest of the story of al -Aqaba. The 12 leaders. So Muhammad made 12 helpers, Ansar, like Jesus with the 12 Ansar or the 12 disciples. If you go to miracles, Muhammad healed Katada's eye, page 381. And we know about Jesus. He, he um, did heal the blind. Muhammad increased food, page 452. And Jesus multiplied the fish and the bread. And actually, there is a funny story here. Um, Muhammad, he multiplied dates because they couldn't talk about fish. It will be like obvious it's, it's, it's a forgery. So he changed it to dates instead of fish and bread. And um, I, I, li I like Ibn Ishaq when he tries to find something uh, that he, he changes to look like real. But um, you can catch him easily because if you follow the pattern of the biography, you will see clearly it's following the Gospels. In the last days, Muhammad was killed by a Jewish uh, lady. She poisoned him and Jesus was killed by Jewish leaders and the Romans, but especially by Jewish leaders because they were, they were the one behind it. So there are some similarities here. So if you, if, if you look at all these details, I think we are in front of one of the most um, forged biographies in history. And just to give a summary right now, if you have, if you have a biography written 200 years later, heavily edited, and then the writer is a famous liar, and not only he wrote it, he, he copied other books, are you going to trust that? Are you going to say we are here about a historical figure? So many things about Muhammad are not historical at all, especially the miracles. If we know that the Quran denied miracles of, 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 for Muhammad, um, I'm going to read from um, chapter 17, verse 59. Nothing has prevented us from sending signs except that former people denied them. So the Quran says there are no miracles for Muhammad because previous people they didn't believe when we sent miracles to them. That's what the Quran says. And you find Ibn Ishaq filling his biography with hundreds of miracles to Muhammad. Just because he saw the Gospels are full of miracles. And then he, he realized it will, it will look really weak if Muhammad didn't have miracles. If, if we go back to the name Muhammad itself, I have doubts about the name itself. Muhammad is not a name, actually. It's it's uh, uh, it's a description. It's 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 the glorified one. So he was trying to glorify Muhammad as Jesus. If we go back to 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 Muslim sources, you will find his name was Qutb when he was uh, born. Qutb, not Muhammad. So when you name him the glorified one, the praised one. Muhammad is the praised one. The praised one is Jesus, not Muhammad. So everything about Muhammad was made to look like Jesus. He's the last one. He's the, uh, he's the, he's the Omega. He's the Omega. Uh, and, and we know Jesus is the, is the Omega, not Muhammad. So he's the last prophet. And he made Jesus look like the, the, the Baptist to them, to him. He announced the coming of Ahmed. He announced the coming of the one. Actually, um, in Islam, we name people Mustafa. Mustafa means the chosen one. 
and we believe that Muhammad is was his name was Mustafa actually was the chosen one and the chosen one is the Messiah is the Christ the chosen one the invented one he was chosen to save to save his people not Muhammad so when you say he's the chosen one he's the last one and Jesus was like the Baptist to uh, to, to him then you are just forging a biography and making everything about Muhammad look like Jesus. You don't have an authentic person. You don't have a person to present here. You have an imitation. It's like the Chinese products. When, when you, the U.S. makes something, the Chinese just try to look at it and make something that looks like it, but it's cheap. It breaks easily. So Ibn Ishaq, he tried to make a figure that looks like Jesus, but it is cheap. It's made in China. It breaks when you look at it very closely. So Muhammad, there are so many things about him are fake if you look at it. We don't know actually how much was fake and how much was real. Is it 90%? Is it 80%? Is it 70%? We don't know. We just know that Ibn Ishaq was forging a biography. He was the biggest liar. We, uh, you can have in Islam, even Muslim scholars didn't trust him, and still we take the biography of Muhammad from him.